Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike and Zach. What's up, gentlemen? I told Zach I would not chastise you for saying what's up anymore. So I'm not gonna. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I did listen to the cast last week. I noticed you opened with that. I did. And before Zach even gave you a hard time about it, I immediately thought, I have to remember this for next week. There you go. <laughs> I remembered it too, for what it's worth. Um, my, my brain is mushed, so I honestly forgot. <laughs> it's, it's just a natural thing to do. You know, it's, when you see someone, you're like, hey, how's it going? How are you? Anyway, uh, so you will notice <laughs> our backgrounds are, have a certain theme to them, which we will get into uh in a in a bit um well let's just get to it now we're changing over to marvel <laughs> crisis protocol <laughs> yeah, yeah no this is this is now an mcp podcast uh no just kidding um <laughs> so there will be civil war part two because mike and i both won our top 16 games and we will be facing each other in the top eight in invader league so because every great story never ends that's right <laughs> zach how do you how do you feel about this I'm, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and play neutral this time around. Uh, I think. Hey, um, hell, man. No, I mean I'm still I'm, st I'm still I'm still I'm still I'm still riding with Mike. I'm still picking Mike. But Ooh. um, Ooh. you know that's just because you, listen, you you stay with the hand you played with before. Uh, again, Mike is Mike. We get at each other all the time. We got the same last name. Play the same faction. I gotta stay with it. Okay. Um. It doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't necessarily mean I think he's favored in this matchup. I, I do think that is a discussion we can have. Um, it's going to be a good game regardless. Let's put it that way. It is going to be a good game. That is for sure. I have yet to have a game with Kyle that has not been a good game. Um, so it will be, it will certainly be interesting. Yeah. And you're not playing Jank this time. So it'll be <laughs> a little more traditional probably, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, you know, um, got to keep you on your toes, right? Yep. Um, I'm definitely playing a more powerful list than I normally play against you, uh, but but you're also significantly more well versed in how to handle this list. So you're well, both in a comfort zone situation yes, here. That's for sure. I have played against Rex a lot. Um, not that that necessarily makes me better <laughs> against <Rex. laughs> as as I almost snatched defeat from the jaws of victory in my last round against Rex. You, you did. And as long as we're on that topic, let's table the Civil War thing for a second. And let's talk, because <laughs> I, I made a promise to a lot of people in Twitch chat the other day that I would just um, open up on you for your <clears throat> double move attack into a bunch of clones with units like still to activate on the other side of the table. Um, what were you thinking, dude? Can you, can you <laughs> walk me through this? Because like the objectively correct choice was a standby token and all of Twitch chat knew it, but you didn't. <laughs> yeah. So uh, two things. Uh, a, it was, there was like four to diff four ish different things that I could have done mall with mall there. And that was clearly the worst one. Um, <laughs> so it yeah. was just, it was like objectively a mistake. Um, which I think I said in the post interview. You definitely but, did, but I'm still giving you crap. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for two reasons, one, uh, sometimes when you got a lightsaber and there's a bunch of clones in front of you, you just want to hack them up. So, um, and two, I thought that spot was a little safer than it was. Yeah, it was not safe at all. No. Um, I, this is sort of the danger of playing, you know, quote unquote, top down in TTS is you don't appreciate the angles as much. Um, and there was definitely two shots in particular that at least when I first made that move, I didn't appreciate that he would be able to get. And they were basically the two uh, hardest hitting ones, his echo squad and then fives. Um, both were able to kind of like around that corner and shoot him. Um, and for whatever reason, when I was doing my top down look, I didn't appreciate that they'd be able to do that. I'm like, well, he'll just get shot by the strike team and Rex. I've got a dodge joke and that's fine. 
Um, but yes, clearly the standby would have been better there. I think the best course of action there actually was just to, there was like a, um, a one man unit that he failed to finish off the previous turn because I rolled a, a blank on a red dice reroll. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, I should have just thrown his saber at that unit and then jumped back behind that nice little rock in the middle of the table. That was like, in That's hindsight, what I that thought was... you were gonna do. Yeah, yeah. But then, then you charged in, and I was like, all right, well, he's got to be taking a stand. <laughs> that, that's like clearly the move. Here. Yeah. And then you like rolled dice, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> 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 like I know how this goes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Mole died. Um... <laughs> <laughs> all right. So give me insight into my perspective of all this. Is that. I can only watch the game on mute and no offense, but Legion on mute is just not, I can't do it. Like, so I watched you guys set up. I watched a little bit of turn one and I was like, I, I got to turn this off because I can't watch what no, you know, I can't hear David talk. I'm like, ah, I can only understand so much of what's going on. So I'm like, I, I got to turn it off. So I messaged Mike. I was like, Hey, just let me know what happens. I, I can't listen in. Just like, let me know. So at that point I saw where R2 was deployed and I said to Mike, just let me know. He has to send a B2 unit out there to kill R2. And if he kills R2, he's probably in a really good position because Maul's behind that rock, right? So Mike is like, dude, uh, he smoked R2 before he like even activated. I'm like, oh, all right. So he's got it in the bag. Like that's pretty much game over with where Maul's positioned. Yeah. So I don't even turn the stream back on to like even look at a thing. And I get like four rapid fire messages from Mike. And I'm like, nah, I Mike's Mike usually like it sends me like one or like maybe two. No, he's like sending me like four. I'm like something's wrong. So he's like, dude, I don't know what's going on. Kyle, Kyle just slipped up. He's like, Maul was in a great position and he did the wrong thing. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Maul did the wrong thing. Like Kyle's played Force User like every game other than the one that he lost to with the Barks, mind you. And I'm like, he knows how to play Force Users. He knows not to go into the clone ball. He's like, no, he went to the clone ball and hacked up. And I'm like, oh geez. Uh, it, so needless to say, I tuned back in and your BX sniper started taking shots that were meaningful. And I was like, he's really going to pull it out. So then I tuned back out again. Cause I just, I just can't do Legion without sound. And then all I see is Mike posting our, you know, our fifth trooper discord, you lucky son of a gun or whatever it was, or you, I don't know how you pulled that one out. Split, split yeah. Yeah. Out. Of course. <laughs> and, uh, and all I could think of, and I might've said it, or maybe I didn't, I probably thought in my head and thought I typed it out, but didn't was this guy's horseshoe. You can just sometimes be so far jammed up there. Um, <laughs> But hey, you do back it up with good play 98% of the time. So I will say that this is, uh, but this is one of those like times where <laughs> that was a really big mess up. It was a 2% situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was the reason I went in with Mole there was because he basically was in a position to kill a B1 unit, which would have put me down on points because R2 is 45 and a B1 unit's 54. So I yeah. needed to kill something. But clearly that, that one wound phase two was the same thing that I could have killed and just run away. Um, and it, in hindsight, I appreciate that more than I did at the time. Um, it was the hostage unit that I was able to engage in melee, which ended up ultimately um, allowing me to still win because I did kill them eventually. Uh, he dropped the hostage token. He had to chase it down. I ended up being able to basically body block it with B2s on the last turn. Um, and then I had a heroic BX sniper do like a 360 no scope on a. <laughs> he had, he had... I, to say it was a 360 no scope is like not giving it enough credit. This was a 360 no scope where you could see like, I don't know, half a percent of the total silhouette. Yeah. Like... <laughs> oh no, it was one of those. Oh yeah, it was oh, one man. of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw in the single Elims chat after um, after I finished the game. Like everybody posting the um, the gifts of <laughs> like people using like telescoping lenses and uh, like Captain Sparrow and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean with his giant like yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we we did have to do a judge call on whether that model was visible but it was so barely um, well I mean it was just one of those situations where like you had to move to get the shot you yep. still like it was it was like you know semi questionable. Um, like the, I think that call could have gone the other way. Like maybe I don't know. I didn't see it. It was close. Um, but you didn't have a name for lethal. Nope. And you were firing into searching clones. 
Yeah, it was a 33% and it, chance. And it was hardcover down to late, yeah. right? Like, it, you know, had yeah, he like, had a dodge token, the game would have probably just been a... Did you roll a crit? I don't remember. It was a crit. It was a crit. Okay, so yeah. dodge wouldn't have done anything. But, yeah. you know, it just like... Man... Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Like, it's easy to analyze a game coming down to one. Oh, one totally. Goal. But there are there are several besides the mall mistake. Even just if you look at the pure dice, like he had um, a, a phase two and echo both on one wound that I was repeatedly shooting. So at any point on any of the previous four turns that I was shooting those units, if he's failed one additional save, then I mean, I was only down by fifteen points when the game ended. So. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that, that I, would have been the difference. Um, like my original plan A on that turn was to, if I won priority, to just snipe Echo because Echo was in, in the open, and yes. I could. He has blown one wound, and I could have just aim shot him. Um, and then that would have been the same difference, but I lost the priority roll. So it's you know, it's like, it's easy to be like, well, one dice roll, but there were, you know, in any game that comes down to one dice roll, there's probably hundreds of previous dice rolls <laughs> over the course of the game too that you yeah. know could go one way or the other to make the difference i mean in fairness um your mall was like one of seven or something stupid on his saves oh yeah it was you bad. know like, like it was with with like dodge tokens and yeah, stuff. yeah um so I mean, but he should have never been in a position where he was getting shot in the first place. Clearly. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I've said on this podcast and elsewhere, basically for force user play, like, you know, uh, people complain about like failing saves on force users. And um, I'm going to take hold myself to task here and basically say, if, if your force users are getting shot at all, you've probably done something wrong. Unless the best it's like. defense is to not be shot. <laughs> right. Um, and I did something wrong. <laughs> so, um, unless you're like Operative Luke with uh, full surprises active, you know, then you can eat pretty much any single shot pretty safely. But um, yeah, because yeah, excluding I feel like that, that situation, yeah, I've had the discussion a couple of times about like situational awareness on like Luke or Obi Wan, and I and I and I get the premise behind it, but like if your idea is to like have a dodge token and situational awareness to like block like a BX or an arc trooper shot, well your mindset's already in the wrong spot because they shouldn't be taking that sniper shot in the first place. You know, uh, it, needless to say that it goes for any shot though. Right. You know, like the, the, the more shot, the more, the more shots that you don't take on a Jedi, the better, like our force user, I just say Jedi because yeah. I'm so used to it. But um, like you chose the option where, <laughs> where a lot of shots came. <laughs> came yeah, yeah. It wasn't even really that many in fairness. It was like three. It was three, yeah. three more yeah. than he should have been taken. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I just like you know, uh, you would expect him to maybe hold up to three shots with a dodge. Tip. Yeah, and, and there was a couple that were only like two or three dice. I feel like. well, yeah. I was gonna say when you said that he was like one of seven on saves. I just assumed he didn't have a, a dodge token because sometimes it is hard to get dodges on mall. I think what happened, and Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong here, is there was like a three die, three hit shot that came through. You spent a mm. dodge token on it. I think he took one wound there. Yeah, and then you didn't have the dodge token for like the aimed six die six hit shot that came through after yep. it. Yeah. Um, what which... were you thinking for like a deflect? Were you thinking for like a deflect reason? Typically, if I have like a lower dice pool coming, I'll save the dodge for the big. My one. assumption was that Kyle didn't think the other squad could hit him. That's yes. Oh, okay. I, I think okay. I said that earlier. Is I didn't appreciate that. Um, those those two uh, beefier units would be able to get angles on. Okay, that makes sense because I've seen so. you be patient with dodge tokens on force well, users. And it was it was totally like move cohere like you know to the far side of the the cohesion bubble to kind of like squeeze the shot around the corner if I yeah. recall correctly. Yep. Um, yeah, in both cases, which is a legit thing that I um, that I clearly did not take the time to measure properly for. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and the, I, I will say, um, <clears throat> and maybe maybe this is something to talk about uh, later on in the cast today, since I guess we're a little short on like super topics, but, um, you know, sometimes with chess clocks, uh, you can feel a little pressured to not take the time to look at those things that you otherwise would, I find. Uh, no, I've noticed the same. And part of that, I think, is just experience and practice because, you know, I, I ended the game with like 25 minutes on my clock. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, clearly, 
uh, you know, budgeting that like time, it introduces the concept of time as a resource. And if there's a situation where it's like, all right, mall is activating, you know, this is clearly an important activation. I think I know what I want to do, but it's worth the time to like, just sort of slow myself down and spend an extra two minutes thinking about this to make sure I'm doing it correctly. That's like a practice with clocks thing. I think that at least personally, I could stand to improve. Um, Cause it's definitely, you know, when you are on the clock, it's easier to just kind of see red because your instinct is to just like, that's like the simplest thing to do. There's clones in range. I'm, I'm going to go kill them, you know? Um, so. And, and ironically, you probably do make all those measurements when you're not on a chess clock. And in fact, you're burning someone else's time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like the, the opposite of it is that you've done it in the past and you're actually burning the time for both of you rather than this time you're just burning it for yourself. You know, well, um, and that's, I, I've actually, um, I've found them sort of liberating because I personally, oh, yeah. I, I stress a lot about, um, like getting to all six turns. Cause my style emphasizes patience usually, <laughs> um, the game's balanced and, uh, around six turns. For, well, uh, for just, the most part. Too. And just, just for me personally in my style, I, I generate a lot of stress, uh, hassling my opponent to get to six turns because that's just my expectation is that it should be six turns. And, um, it's been very liberating to not have to worry about that at all. Um, I know that this is a whole separate topic that we could. Yeah. yeah. I, about, I get but, what you mean though. I get yeah, what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it, uh, yeah. Anyway, it turned it into a far more entertaining game than I think it would have been otherwise. Um, basically I had to push up cause I was down on points and down on a lightsaber. <laughs> um, my B2s yeah. ultimately carried the day, basically. Just push forward and started rocketing clones. Um, that BX, that one BX sniper I had, I think killed like like seven clones by himself. Uh, he dies first. <laughs> 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 no, he's totally harmless. You definitely need to just ignore he him. He dies first. <laughs> uh, why don't we get back to our little civil war here? Um, That's like the kicker from the water boy, like picking the guy he's trying to kick the ball at. Yeah, on the exactly. Kick. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He was, he was definitely the hero of the game, both over the course of it. And also on that last play that allowed me to body block his hostage. So um, yeah. Anyway. So that was my game. Uh, let's talk about our let's talk about our civil war here. So, um, for those that are listening, you should know what we're running already. But I'm running basically mall with ten activation mall with B twos. Uh, so it's three B twos, three B ones, a BX sniper, um, a T series mall, his Sith probe droids. And I think that's ten. Um, it's not super complicated. Uh, it does not have perfect order control, which I've sort of uh learned to live with um and uh personally i find one thing actually that you guys um said last week that i think is interesting to talk about is this tournament has sort of been like the coming out party for b2s totally. as 100%. like as like a competitive unit um and i think i agree with that i mean there there were not that many b2 lists uh certainly compared to like the 13 activation staff lists but um, at least in top eight, you know, of the, maybe this is a good time to talk about top eight, um, of the 11 lists that had 13 activation steps, there's only one left yet, uh, two mall B2 lists made top eight and there were only three of those. So, um, a much better, sorry, yeah, go ahead. specifically mall B2. I think there were several lists outside of mall B2s yeah. that had B2s in them. And or that had mall. There was like yes. a mall. There was like a mall tank list. There was like a mall Dooku list. Um, there was, and there were some other random. There was like a B two stat list. Um, so yeah, in th there were three lists I think that had that specific combination: mall plus B twos, and two of them are still in the tournament. So, or actually, one of them was just eliminated um, yesterday. Uh, was, yes, yeah, it was, was. It was. It was. I mean, so Bobette was playing it. Yep. 
um it was it was it was not the same list just to be clear like to no, say he's, he's only got like one b2 and he's got like decas and stuff it's it's sort of a smorgasbord list so he act, i don't know exactly what the mistake was but there was an issue with his list registration at the beginning of elims that's why he's got like a 34 point bid i think like there's a couple heavy weapons that aren't on b1s or something that should be yeah or was intended to be um so I mean, yeah, I I think given the circumstances, he, he clearly did pretty well with it um, for misunderstanding. Yeah. I mean, list. he he, be, he knocked a Luke Cook out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and and I do think that like, um, but I'm not sure that that's like a list we should put on a pedestal for beats. No, no, yeah, no, I guess. yeah. I, not not that it's bad. I just um, your list clearly emphasizes B twos um significantly more yeah yeah i mean kyle kyle's list is basically the epitome of what you want a force user list to really look like i mean other than maybe like one other sniper or something like that is what i would say but like kyle's like threat saturation to go with maul is super super helpful and kind of what you want in a list and, and i know kyle you thought about doing 11 axe versus the 10 but the 10 probably felt better because of like the resistance you probably have with the b2s Right, you were you were teetering on eleven. What were you gonna cut? Like a B two down to a B one with like another snet? No. Yeah, yeah. so B X droid or something maybe. I actually practiced eleven. You can cut. Um, there's basically two ways to do it. You can cut two B twos down to B ones and have like a silly bid, um, and add a sniper, or you can cut one B two down to B one and add a sniper. But then you only have like a like an eight point bid or something like that. What's um, what's a silly bid? You have a twenty bid now like 30 something um <laughs> I, I just want to throw that out there yeah no um and i actually I, I know that droids can bid a lot um i'm not sure how well that's working for them <laughs> uh one thing that i wanted to follow up from your discussion last week is you mentioned that um like there's only one rebel in top eight yeah um i think droid uh zach speculated that maybe they were running into a lot of droids um it's actually they actually have at least last I checked they had a positive win rate against droids. Um, I think they've actually just been running into a lot of mirrors. Like there have been a lot of rebel team kills. Um, I was I was more or less discussing that the three lists that were left in top sixteen were geared towards beating droids. Is what I was really getting at. Like the ones that were still available last week were the triple Wookiees, the air speeder. They all had Luke in them essentially, or Luke yeah, and yeah. Sabine. Like they had the raw dice power to deal with droids, where sometimes rebelists can't deal with them. You know, that was basically what I was getting at. Well, and I think I know the positive win rate plays into that, but it's kind of a yin and a yang type of thing. Like you don't know where those numbers fall and don't fall. Yeah. You know? Well, I do think there's a little bit of a misperception that rebels are bad against droids when, in fact, they do have a lot of good tools against them. And you just listed some Wookiees, T47, Sabine. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you can, can list build properly, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if properly is the right word for it, but you can you can put tools in your list that counter droids. You can hedge your bets, um, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, th uh, I think the, the issue is more of like the <clears throat> flexibility of flexing into red saves with them. You know, it, it's a lot of times it's like, one or the other, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, because you can either stack Pierce or you can stack dice, but not both necessarily. Yeah, unless you're clones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is why I, I joked. I, I, I joked about, uh, so clones have like an 80-20 win rate against droids, which is silly. I've never yeah. seen anything like that. That's way better than even like, like we talked last season about how they were, you know, the the clone empire matchup was skewed but that was only like 65 35 <laughs> yeah yeah 80 20 is silly anyway i joked that I, maybe i cut that down to 75 25 but then since that happened two more droids lost to clones so um <laughs> i think it's, it's probably back to 80 20 it's a, it's a bad matchup it's a matchup that i think would be different um if like droids had a different core unit frankly um you know but i but i think that like there's those droids just get chewed up and spit out by the massive amount of dice that are getting thrown across the table a lot of well, the that, time that's the thing right like i think mike and i think i mean i'm telling you i'm trying to recall what we did discussed completely last week but it all goes out the window half the time 
like I, I forget I, like like two days after the cast I forget exactly what was said but I think it. I think you and I discussed the fact that like the droid lists technically aren't gun lines but they effectively have to somewhat play like that in a lot of their matchups especially against clones and like I understand that they're built for objectives but you're still gonna have to get into a gunfight with clones like it's just inevitable because the clone player is going to force the engagement correct or try to force the engagement and turn it into a gunfight and those droids are just gonna melt to the to the fact that clones can doctor their you know doctor their dice to be really freaking good with aim tokens and surge tokens right like you're just you have a better chance of wiping out b1s with your clones because you're taking aims and surges and just piling onto the dice like if they're rolling six or seven saves you're you're doing damage (laughs) like you're hurting those b1s (laughs) yeah and and i think it's compounded by the fact that like um you you can't hide you, I mean, like, you just can't. Like, you're going, there's going to be a unit exposed in, in the, most of the time, you know? I mean, I think there are some maps that that maybe isn't true on, but it's not something you can count on. Like, it, at least with Rebels, you're like, I've got five man units and there's only four of them. And like, I can kind of hide them behind buildings and stuff, but you can't hide 40 droids behind buildings um, and, yeah. and not have them get shaved. Yeah, you you gave me a hard time on our on our droid core cast about complaining about oh I've got too many things I just can't hide all of them, <laughs> um, but working with space is a real challenge with droids that you actually run into like you literally run out of things to hide behind because you have too much crap. <laughs> yeah, um, and and I think against you know when when you start hitting like opponents that are like you know cohering around corners and stuff like it. All it takes is like one Z six like mini to go here around a corner and you've lost like three droids. And like, that doesn't include the rest of the squad, you know, um, there's situations right. where you don't even care if your leader can see them as long as you're swinging out the other dice, because you're, you you're die, throwing you're nine be in heavy cover anyways, whatever you're I'm pushing seven nine through. <laughs> with four aim tokens. Right. Like yeah, exactly. I'll take that, you know, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, you're still in push pushing five through cover or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um so I, yeah, I mean I, I think that uh, I mean I'm sure it's certainly like that win record is probably more complicated than you know clones throw a ton of dice, but I do think that like that is the short story. <laughs> yeah. And I think part of it too, we've talked about this already, but um I think part of the reason that of the three droid lists in the top eight, two of them have a force user in them is partly because, you know, one legit access or sorry, one legit weakness of separatists is that they don't have a lot of access to pierce outside their characters. You know, they've got BX snipers, but BX snipers aren't great when your opponent has dodge tokens. Uh, And that's basically it. You know, they don't have any core units that have pierce. They don't have any sp- other special forces units that have pierce. Um, it's literally just like BX snipers and characters, and that's it. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't. They can't get any shotguns. <laughs> they can't get any bowcasters. Uh, they do have access to poison. That's true, but that's not nearly as good as pierce. I and know, that was my sarcastic. Phrase. Okay. <clears throat> um... Sorry. I, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's. You know, and that like they're. You know, rebels have a lot of characters with Pierce that are also sort of like ranged slash support characters. You know, all of the the separatist characters are either melee users with lightsabers or a T series <laughs> who's not killing anything. So, you know, it's not like even if you try to sort of quote unquote rely on your characters for Pierce, you're talking about taking somebody with a laser stick and that's it. Um, yeah. So. I mean, I, I do think that like that's definitely a weakness in the faction, right? And um... which which is okay because they, clearly they do other things well. But I think it's underappreciated in the in the droids versus clones matchup, especially in situations where you kind of drop that lightsaber, because you know you could have like a silly quantity of firepower as some of these thirteen activation lists do. But at the end of the day, you know if you're facing a clone ball with a bunch of surge tokens and dodges, like they could just save out of it. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, and oftentimes, like, the averages aren't on your side. 
really when it comes down to that like you know right. yes you can roll 20 dice into my clones and heavy cover but like three guys are gonna die and then you're gonna lose two units right um i don't know it's right like you look at a aat pool which is notionally terrifying right even if you get the full seven hits with the high velocity you're shaving off two for heavy cover the clone ball probably has uh, at least one dodge, so that's down to four. Well, dodge is high not velocity. Doing anything against. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, high yeah. velocity. Um, but regardless, you know, so you're talking about five hits, maybe four if you can't convert that white dice, and that's like what one to two dead guys off your most powerful shot in your list. Off your 200 point unit, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> like don't get me wrong. Sometimes you can spike the ball, right? And like they they fail four saves, and you're like, yeah, but that is not what normally happens. Oh. Um, yeah it's you know you if you're gonna if you're gonna lean into the dice thing you gotta actually lean into the dice thing because eventually you know those those saves are gonna normalize <laughs> frankly over the course of the game i mean unless they get really unlucky which right you're probably gonna win that game if they're that unlucky anyways yeah you know and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't like shoot clones no, no, just things to be, that don't have pierce you absolutely should they still you still got to make them real safe so, right you know, um uh, but if you don't have pierce when you're doing that you're going to be a lot less reliable and efficient yeah. in the process um yeah i don't know I, it, it's going to be interesting I'm, I'm looking forward to our game you know i think it's uh clearly i have a range advantage clearly you've got a like once once you get in there, I think you do have a firepower advantage, assuming that your units can survive the trip to range too. Um, I'm just gonna take a standby token at the beginning of the game and put it on Maul's unit card, <laughs> um, just for storage later. You know. Um, yeah, go go for it. Um, <laughs> I'm actually gonna just put it in the middle of the table. <laughs> I'll just I'll put it on top of one of those rock spires, like not near any units, so it's it's clear that it doesn't sure, belong to anybody, sure, just sure. so I can see it. Yeah, you know. just so that it's in the back of your mind. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, um, if I, when it comes down to is that like if that happens before in turn five, like I've probably done something wrong. <laughs> um, well, and you you and I have played each other a lot, and you are very good at kiting as a result <laughs> yeah yeah like i uh, i was playing bushman um like two or three weeks ago it, we were like i think we were practicing for elims um and he like he dove his operative luke like into my clone ball and i was like all right whatever and i just <laughs> by the time luke activated again the only unit that was within charge range of him even with disengage was the unit he was in melee with he was like oh well this doesn't do anything anymore. I was like, yeah, <laughs> like sucks to be you, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you know, and I, I think um, when it, you know, I think your list is a little different and that his list, um, I was able to kind of peel the firepower out of it before we got there. Right. So kiting didn't cost me anything because there was nothing that could shoot me. Um, I sort of doubt that's going to be the situation we're in, but like, you know, yeah. I, I also think that regardless of what objective we end up playing, and this is sort of where the clone strong suit is like, you have to expose a unit eventually. Right. And, and, um, you know, when you have to expose a white save unit, it often doesn't go, go well for the white save unit, particularly against clones. So. Yeah, and, and the map we're playing on Kessel is pretty open. So, yeah, it's... yeah. I mean, I'll never forget last season. We I think we were we had like a practice game, and you like set up VAPs, and I uh, I like moved like a full arc squad like forward into range of your VAP, and you were just like, oh, I can never touch that VAP ever. <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah, that was that was before standby shooting prisoner. Yeah, a little different, um, but it's yeah. not that much different these days. No. Um, you know. Yeah, we were on like a long march and you did like scouting party plus a move and then took a back standby and essentially just like <laughs> I couldn't access my map for the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, so speaking of which, uh, I do want to like briefly talk about scouting party because um, it, it was so I played against Sammy P this round of, of Invader and um, so, so I, I think you know, you know, he, he definitely knew his mistake. Like as soon as 
like the second activation of turn one, but he, he deployed two sniper teams at a place that he thought was safe. I had not used scouting party when he did that. And I scouted my two phase twos directly at them. Cause, cause frankly, the range of take that clankers before scouting party, assuming you do it turn one is basically range six. Um, yeah, it's not basically range six. It is. Yeah, I mean, six. it's like, it's like range six, like minus, you know. Oh right, minus 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 a couple millimeters from the moves. Yeah. Yeah. But. So, so, but he like he like set his snipers like right outside of range five of my units, right? And I, he was like, "Oh, I'm safe," and he had cohered his um, back models so that they like were currently out of line of sight. Um, but with two speed two moves, one from scouting party and one from their actual move on their turn, my units like could totally see both models and um, just deleted both. I I activated Rex first to make sure I had aim tokens for the shots. Um, yeah, but... Obviously, you know. <laughs> obviously, I you know. Um, but I just like I would I would caution people just generally like scouting party is one of the. I, it might be one of the strongest keyworded cards on a on a unit card in the game. It's so good. The value um, of it is so good. The versatility of it's so good. Yeah, and, and just like once you get good at using it, you can really put your opponents in in binds that they otherwise normally wouldn't be. And particularly, you can punish people for making mistakes. Um, is really where the huge value is. You know, I, uh, it was funny. I, uh, I was listening back to the game and um, <laughs> as soon as I like deleted the first sniper team, David's like, oh no, it's LVO all over again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, yeah. Um, this was another but- situation where I couldn't watch, but someone messaged me. He's like, yeah, Mike's taking out two strike teams in turn one. And I was like, what well and it, and, it, and it was two strike teams before they ever activated right yeah like so, that's that's so insane it was it was not only did i get to kill them i got to go like twice uh without interruption at the end of the turn after going first it just you know i i mean you know sammy was great um i i think you know he he knew the the, the cliff he had to climb after turn one and um you know he put up a fight um but that's just that's really hard to recover from in a clone versus clone matchup where you've only got three core any units ma- and, any matchup. and that's tough. totally i just like when when you when you're against the clones like you need as many sources of pierce as you have and when you lose half of it before they even get to go it it really puts a damper on your odds um it's a good game though um but yeah scouting party is get good with using it rex players because it's um it's vital to play in that list correctly yeah it's super powerful to just relocate two units of your choice basically at the end of your deployment right and it's just like uh, oftentimes so a lot of people um ask me why i i generally only i have four units with offensive push but i often only use two still to take that clankers with um and frankly, it's just the flexibility of just being able to to like load four units into my deployment zone, pick which two to scouting party with, and then then use them to take that clankers. You know, um, your other units are still giving you aim tokens. Like, right? Yeah. Four four is overkill. You really only just need like two fully loaded units. Yeah, I mean, if you kill a unit with take that clankers in a competitive game, it's often enough. You know. Oh yeah, that's um, huge. Yeah, if you kill a single unit, that's you've gotten more than enough value out of it. Yeah, um, and I, I also like the order on Rex is so important for take that clanker. It's like don't, don't just like spew a take that clanker shot with one ape token, please, please don't do that. Um, unless you have to. Unless you won't get an opportunity to take it if your opponent gets to go, right? Exactly. You get, yeah. But like, if like load load Rex with the two aim tokens or three if he's got the offensive push before you do it, because like that's when take that clankers gets good. Uh, yep. So. All right. Should we briefly talk about who's actually in the top eight? Just yeah, let's um, do it. It is top eight Invader League time. Yep. So, 
one of these games has actually been decided already, so we might as well open with that one. But uh, that one was Babette, who played the aforementioned Mall Smorgasbord list. And earlier in the tournament, knocked out Luke Cook, but uh, lost to Inno Inosatum. Mm-hmm. Inno Inosatum. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I, th- I think he's French. I'm not positive about. He that. is French. Yes. Uh, so, and he was playing basically Rexstar with uh, with with some. So this is a little bit tweakage. different. But there's yeah, it's he's got like some medics. He only has one arc strike team. Yeah, it's definitely different. It's different. It is still Rex with a bunch of phase twos, uh, but he's c- sort of cut the strike teams for some more beef to include um, some medics. So uh, he's he's got like three or four six man squads. So he's often rolling like eleven dice into you with Z sixes instead of ten, which is not nothing. Um, yeah, those are beefy yeah, units. Yeah, like like they're harder to kill. You know they're harder to deplete so that the z6 shots do you know do less um the medics are interesting uh, you know i don't know i have a hard time stomaching 20 points for treat one capacity one i it's possible it's worth it um clearly it's working out for him um i don't know that's just a lot of points to pay for me um, it is you know it's like you said it does make them a six-man unit with full dice because they do throw their dice. So it's not quite as simple as just you're getting an actual clone body that attacks things. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you. It's clones, points are tight in a clone list. Yeah. Um, all right. And then we've got Habmo and Timbo. Habmo is running. <laughs> I love this list. Basically, it's Lando, Luke, two naked, sorry, Lando, Jedi, Luke, two naked fleets, two naked rebel troopers. R2 with three PO and then three Wookiees. So he's playing against Timbo, who's playing the Saber Tank. And when we yep. first discussed that he was playing triple Wookiees, I assumed he had bowcasters. And it's like, ooh, I like that Wookiee list going against this tank because they have impact and they have pierce, which is like important. Um, I, it, it's going to be interesting to see these naked Wookiees go against the tank. Um, I mean, the good. The, I, clearly, what they're going all in on is just taking the Wookies and the operative Luke and throwing them at your face. And clones necessarily don't have an answer for that, right? If they get in, um, you know, if the opportunity is there for them to get in, um, it'll be interesting. I, I think the lack of Pierce that we've already been discussing might be a problem. I know that operative Luke obviously is operative Luke, but that, I, mean, I think that's I think that's, that's a fun matchup. I I want to see that game. That's a really fun matchup to me that game comes down to whether operative luke can like land the son of skywalker um yeah i think so on, on the tank right like i i mean like last first sos just chop it into like three three attacks from luke should kill the tank on average two attacks from luke should kill a tank well you gotta remember it's, he's got he can yeah. dodge crits and that's true because he's got padme stuff. And you know, so yeah. I mean, it, it gets a little complicated there, I think. Um, but yes, definitely three attacks from Opera Look should just kill it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think after Pierce six into the tank, you know. Um, so I mean, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that like, um, the tank's gonna just rip through his army if he doesn't kill it quick. Yeah, all those white saves. And, and, and notably, like, that army literally cannot engage the tank until it's within its standby range, um, which is kind of a big deal, you know? Like, huge. Like, he literally, he's got two rebel troopers that can shoot at range three, and that's it. And I don't even and, think sorry, they want to, Lando. I don't even think they want to engage that thing at range three. <laughs> well, like, and, that, and that's the thing, right? If you're yeah. engaging the tank at range three, you just lost a rebel trooper squad, probably. Essentially, um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, it's it's sort of worth noting that the Wookiees still have Duelist. So, like, they do have Pierce if they, like, melee the tank. Uh, 
Yeah, and you could get impact too with the side arcs, but it's definitely not as good in that situation as having the bow casters. No, for sure, for sure not. Um, I think that there's there's play there. It's just it's going to be a little uphill for the rebels, I think. Well, and it's on Kessel, uh, and he could conceivably just throw the tank on one of those giant plateaus and <laughs> it, like not even be meleeable, depending on where he puts it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I have played against Triple Woogies on that map before. The whole scaling thing is actually pretty good with the way that those hills are set up. So uh, I wouldn't count them out. And clearly Luke is like very good because he can jump around the hills. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. But And Luke is like any list with Jedi Luke in it can just kind of pull a game out of its butt when Jedi Luke just takes the whole game and is like, I got this, guys. You don't, you know. Don't even Brit, don't so even worry stupid. about it. I got this. <laughs> so stupid. Um, but yeah. So who knows? Never never count out a Jedi Luke list. Uh, the next matchup is you and me, which clearly we already talked about. Yep. May the best Iron Man win. <laughs> yeah. So people were we've we've been joking about this meme at the last time we played, and then also this time, uh, we were trying to get people's feelings on who was who. I feel like it's kind of obvious, but the answer surprised me a little bit. It's like the so. easiest, it's like I, the I easiest so question. Too. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, when when people started asking, I started like to doubt my assumptions a little bit. I was yeah. like, I was like, am I am I not like being? I mean, like clearly we're biased, right? But um, I don't know. I thought it was pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, you know, Iron Man is is unconventional and a little uncouth and innovative and uh, just say it just say it. He's, he's arrogant he's a jerk he's an arrogant <laughs> jerk i wouldn't say you're an arrogant jerk i, I definitely have a persona that can be that's yeah. true which, which and, is totally accurate. fine you know and then circles yeah. back to the fact that if you were if mike and i were to say a very bad word on here you would t- say language language yeah <laughs> which would then in turn would probably end up with mike being say did you say language to me um yeah that's but, true you know. we all know tony stark has a heart right like he does you know, deep down inside he's a caring lovable guy but well, you know he projects the persona um uh, yeah i get it and i mean you being cap i think just fits you almost you kind of look like each other if you turn your face sideways sort of S- similar hairdo I-, I think my wife would be thrilled to think uh, <laughs> i look like captain america <laughs> I'll tell her you said that. Yeah, there you um, go. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. Hey, hon, Mike thinks I look like Steve Rogers. Um, there you go. Steve uh, Rogers is kind of small. Uh, that's true. Yeah, Captain America, not so much. Um, I'm unsure I, who I am in the situation because in that movie, technically nobody plays the middle. They do choose sides. Are you like the... Uh, you know what? I'm Ant-Man. I'm Paul Rudd. Because there you go. Paul, Paul Rudd just shows up and he's he's just on the team. He just like happens to... I think he ends up being on Cap's team. Yeah. He's like, we're we're fighting an Iron Man? That's pretty much what he pulls. And Are I'm you sure you're not Spider-Man? Yeah, that, that is true too. I think, yeah, that seems more apt. Yeah, that, that works too. <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man and Ant-Man in that situation kind of go hand in hand. Kind of, you, know? Uh, you know what? The fact that I'm backing Mike while trying to play both sides does make me Spider-Man because... You know, Tony does take Spider-Man under his wing and, and, and it turns into That's this, true. this loving, you know, dad and son situation. But in this case, we're just brothers uh, that are not related at all. And um, I am still riding the Mike Barry train going into this game, Kyle. I'm sorry. Um, Got to get rid of your Swiss flag background. Come on. <laughs> so I think the real question here is... Are you gonna are you gonna break out a win in tournament format against me? So right now I'm two and zero. Oh. Technically true. One of those was a round robin game, but yes. Okay, whatever. All I'm saying <laughs> is that in competitive legion, not on a casual table. Right now, I think Iron Man is is a favorite. That's historically true. <laughs> and but... I beat you with Vader, which is like. That's true, but I was playing some weird like Luke Sabine list that I wasn't familiar yeah. with. I think you were uncomfortable both. I think this will be the most even-footed game we have had in the tournament setting. It will certainly be the game that I'm playing something that I'm most comfortable with. 
Kyle's dancing around, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> um, I mean, we already talked about the 80, 20 clone versus <laughs> droid win rate. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, no. Uh, no, I think it will be a great game. I, uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to make them all um, worth it because he's definitely going to, if, if I pull out a win, it's going to be him putting the game on his back. So I am very aware of that. I know. Um, <laughs> I, I do feel, think, yeah. as the person in between you guys here, I do think that your battle deck is specifically good for Maul. So, and, oh, yeah. and it's not to say that Mike, it's not to say that Mike and his clones can't counter it. Like Mike is still going to be objectively good at those. Um, it's just, your deck is definitely built for Maul to succeed in a lot of areas. Um, that's and that's, true. that's going to be, honestly, that's going to be the most important part of the game. I mean, turn zero is always arguably the most important part of the game. Almost every game turn zero is like the most important part. I'm not trying to take that away from every other game, but I think specifically in this matchup, there are certain things that Mike specifically probably will want to avoid I think you're kind of neutral on some things and then it's going to be, how does Mike assess the situation and attack it? Um, it's not, I'm not saying he's going to lose on turn zero. I'm just saying that he needs to figure out after turn zero, how to attack and assess the situation and quickly. And, and then, you know, he'll know and you'll know probably what's going to come forth and, you know, plans will be hatched out and things like that and dice will be thrown but essentially it's going to boil down to, I think the battle deck and that will set the tone of the game essentially, which it does for most games. And again, I'm not saying that it doesn't for all games, but I think specifically here, it definitely is. Yeah. And that's kind of how you beat clones, right? Is objectives. Um, yeah. Like you're not going to beat clones by trying to kill more of them than they are. Of you. <laughs> that's not usually right. a winning, winning prospect. Um, so yeah. Yeah. You kind of, extent sure yeah right because I mean, like, 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 like i said earlier the gunfight is going to come to you at some point right like most objectives involve counting unit leaders in some fashion uh, yeah totally and, <laughs> which and i feel a little bit better about that in this matchup than most separatist matchups I've been playing, yeah, yeah. just because like we're starting out on an even count yep. that's kind of nice <laughs> yeah 10 on 10 my yeah. my activations are a little bit beefier than most separatist activations are but uh, yeah some of them are i still have b1s and stuff <laughs> tony goes it's still white dice yeah. yeah i mean you know i i'd say your, your b2s can instead of dying to two z6 shots die to three clearly yeah yeah right um b2s do melt when you focus them um also <laughs> so, yes <laughs> at least um, when you focus them with clones yeah um, so anyway, we did not talk about the last two top eight spots, which are mm. um, Snyder, who is the sole remaining representative of the 13 activation separatist meta train. Indeed. Uh, he's got the you know stereotypical 6B1s, 3BX snipers, uh, 1T series, 3 stat list. So I just, I want to talk about this just because I've watched a lot, in 13, a lot of 13 activation games over the course of this invader league season um a couple there have, there things have been that a I, lot to watch there have been um a couple things that i think um are notable that i think people should like probably change about them i don't know why everybody's not just taking the range four gun on the core units i think i think you probably just should be taking the range four gun the whole, all the way home um i think the idea that it's a, a list that operates at range three, I think is, um, it clearly doesn't. Um, and, and, I, and I think you want to be able to operate at range four. And w w when you close to range three, like you still have, what is that? Nine dice or whoops, eight. Eight, eight dice or whatever. Uh, eight. Eight, eight. You know, um, I don't know. I, I think the, particularly in a world where clones are a thing you need to be able to operate from range and poke as opposed to just diving in with b1s that get blasted off the table 
um, is, is how I feel about this. And I, and I think they all would have done a lot better had that been more of the convention. There definitely were some that ran that. Um, the first, uh, in my first round, I played a 13 activation list where the guy had this, all six were the sniper rifle. Yeah. Um, we, we have talked about that. I mean, we talked at length about the E5C versus the E5S in our uh, core droid episode, which I would encourage you to check out. But I, I think, I, and generally, I prefer the E5C. I do, I, do, I, I do see your point in this specific setup where your list is kind of built around you know, engaging with everything at once. It gives you a little more flex in doing that. Like if your staffs get out a little bit ahead of everything else, it gives you an extra range band to work with. Um, and then specifically against clones, if you're trying to slug it out at range three with B1s, it's not going to go well. So my, my problem with the list is that it doesn't do anything until you close. And like a lot of times you don't want to be closing until like turn four, turn five anyways. It would be nice if those units could do something that is like, you know, red, white, critical one is still like decent. It's it's not horrible, right? Yeah. Like it's not great, but at least you can like throw down a suppression token. Like the fact that you can throw down six suppression tokens on a unit is still kind of relevant, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I do anyway, think. Well, yeah. no, I no, I do. I I agree with you because essentially, I've said this numerous times that like it's not built like a gun line list, but it ends up playing like a gun line list. I, I know that this is like a discussion that for like another day, right? But it, it, it's built as like a quote unquote objective list like Tom's were, but it has to engage a certain way to work, which ends up making it a gun line essentially in order for it to work the way it probably needs to. Uh, it, out barring certain situations, at least the games that I've watched, every time I've seen it, I'm like, well, they need to engage all at once or those stats are going to melt and their their upper hand is going to no longer be an upper hand, you know? I actually think that the best analogy might have been the Veer's Bikes lists yep. that, that were played, like, you know, they were, like, 11 activations or something. But, like, the DLTs were, like, a big part of why that list worked because you could do things before you, like, really got in the thick of it, um, you know? That was also... And this continues to be a situation with real tables. One strength of the DLT 19, which is sort of overlooked because we, you know, with the pandemic, we live in such a TTS heavy world right now where there's a lot of area terrain and scatter. But like on real tables, there's not nearly, typically, there's not nearly as much area terrain and scatter, which means that it's easier to line up those range four no cover shots. Oh, totally. And the DLT 19 is amazing in those situations. Um, Two hits, boom, roll two saves at range four. <laughs> like, yeah, really <laughs> and that, that happened a ton in that first year of the game with those DLT lists. Yeah. Um, I would like to think it will happen less, but I still think it will happen more than it happens on TTS. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah, anyway. often that you get caught out of cover on TTS, I feel like. No. Uh, and that's because TTS tables have good terrain variety, but yeah. that's not like a normal thing necessarily. Area terrain in particular is a little more difficult to make. Uh, you know, Legion lends itself towards like blocky 3D printed pieces. Um, so, I mean, LVO had like some of the best tables. It did. Right. right? But there's still lanes that you could find yeah, yeah. on most of the tables that I played with. I was always finding lanes that I could, you know, quote unquote abuse, right? You know, like, mm -hmm. and, and they're just going to exist more on actual tables than virtual yeah, yeah. ones with, you know, things at your fingertips. Yep. Anyway, I don't want to short Jason is confused, who is the last member of the top eight here. We keep getting stuck on rabbit trails, and he's running, uh, I think, what you would call a much more traditional Rex Star. Yeah, it's weird. I actually, um, I mean, I don't know if, like, I, I feel like I'm running the most, maybe, I'm the only one that's not running R2, I guess is what I'm trying to say, um, which I think is interesting. Um, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. It's definitely my preference. Um, I do think his R2, was it his game I was watching? I've watched a lot of games. It's, it's really starting to m like melt in my head. But I think his R2 had a crazy play a couple games ago where like 
it, he blasted off. He scored, blasted off, and like stole a transmission at the same time. Yeah, I saw that one. It was, yeah, it was a good play, and there's definitely good plays you can make with R two. Yeah, my issue with R two is like the games that Kyle just had. You know where he gets blasted off the table, and there's free forty five point or for, yeah forty five points. Well, you were a blue player, now you're not a blue player. You know, like well, and it's one less core unit generally is what you're sacrificing to put R2 in there. Yeah, totally. I definitely prescribe to more surging red saves, the better. <laughs> um, is, I think there's an emote on David's thing that's like surge token. It's, it's surge. Spend that surge. Yeah. And when I'm in his chat, you will find me spamming it. I think I think I said in the chat, I was in there for like like maybe like two minutes. I said that that should just be a picture of Mike's face. <laughs> uh, speaking of, did we say when we play, are, are we allowed to say that? Is we this... are allowed to say that. Okay. I was talking to David uh, earlier today. Um, we're playing it Saturday at 8 p.m. on Yavin Base. Yep. Um, East, Eastern time. Eastern time. Yes, I suppose that's important when talking about Invader League. Um, so, yeah, Notorious Scoundrels Civil War Take Two. Um, I'd say there's less lightsabers, but there's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a single two sided lightsaber, whatever. There, <laughs> there's certainly less barks, <laughs> there's certainly less things with the speeder keyword. Yes, um, <laughs> there is 100% less things with the speeder keyword. Yeah, uh, so, um, which doesn't mean it won't be an uninteresting game, but uh, I think it will be very interesting. Yeah, I think so too. It'll definitely be, I think, a little bit more of the chess match that we are. We are used to, um, yep. as opposed to the um, lightsaber grind fest that was our last game. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> um, it was the surprise Kyle fest. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. It was a good time. It was a yep. good time. Yeah, this will not be that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's at eight o'clock on Saturday night. Check us out. Yeah, I It'll believe. Be on Yavin base. There will be maybe some other stuff over the course of the week to yes. kind of uh, get the hype train rolling. Um, I think that is supposed to be a surprise, right? Who maybe. Knows? I don't know. I have no idea. Whatever that may or may not be. We don't even yeah, know. Look, I don't. I have, I am not privy to what the details. Of We're the not hype either. Train are, this so. is a double blind study, uh, so to speak. So yeah, um, yeah, I. I'm going to try and free myself to either one co cast with David or two watch the game in, in any case. Uh, Saturday might be a tall, t- might be a tall ask of my wife, but we'll see. <laughs> Just yeah. uh, have the in laws come over and do bedtime with the kids or something. They're in Virginia, Kyle. <laughs> I mean, we, we could just mm. flip a coin now. What would the coin flip? Oh, this is an Arizona who wins the game. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, I think I'd be okay with that, actually. Yeah, I think um, you would be too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. Uh, we, could, we could flip your shield instead if you want it. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's something about the air that, like, that shield does not obey the laws of physics. Uh, clearly, clearly. But it's made of vibranium, so maybe it's not supposed to. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, we are the notorious scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm Mike. Peter Parker. <laughs> I guess I should have said I'm Captain America. There you go. Are, are we redoing the the uh, the closing here? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. No, okay. we can roll with it. All right. Um, all right. We'll, we'll see you next week.